Hey internets, so in this video I'm going to be clarifying what is probably one of the most heavily misunderstood ideological concepts you may have seen on the internet, and that is the true meaning of physical removal, specifically as it is referred to as by Hans Hermann Hoppe, who you may or may not have heard of. But for those of you who don't know, Hans Hermann Hoppe is a leading intellectual of the Mises Institute in Austrian economics. Now this video is not intended to be about the life and times of Hoppe, so I'll just be brief on this introduction. If you haven't heard of him, I recommend googling him and checking out some of his books, a lot of which you can actually get for free and are available on the Mises Institute. But anyway, back to physical removal. Now, before getting into what physical removal is, you kind of have to go into what physical removal is not, because unfortunately there's a lot of memes out there on the internet that aren't exactly accurate, funny and based as they may be. So first off, no, physical removal does not literally mean grabbing communists and then throwing them out of helicopters into the ocean. That's just the meme. In fact, it doesn't really have anything to do with these alleged free helicopter rides at all. So no, physical removal is not some magic loophole in libertarian thought which allows them to act as the aggressor in situations and round people up you happen to dislike against their will and will just say delete them from the simulation. Nope, that is not what physical removal is. Sorry if you thought otherwise, thought sorry if you took the means literally, that's not the way. It is not some weird dog whistle, it is not some obscure or cryptic call to violence. Physical removal is none of these things, for the most part at least. There is an extremely unlikely to happen hypothetical scenario that would allow someone to throw a commie out of a helicopter under the pretense of physical removal, which I will go over at the end of this video after I've explained everything so it all makes sense, but um, spoiler alert, it involves self-defense pretty much. So anyways, what actually is physical removal then? Well, physical removal really just means to be physically distant, or in other words, ways to physically distance yourselves from those who are incompatible with yourself and incompatible with society. It is the recognition of the fact that in a free society, specifically a free society that, you know, actually cares about maintaining the freedom it has, that society cannot tolerate the presence of those who wish to take their freedom away, and thus they must be ostracized and exiled to preserve the libertarian order. Physical removal then recognizes that the libertarian concepts of property rights and freedom of association creates a means to an end to actually make this a real thing, and have an actual viable strategy to both create and maintain said libertarian free society. And it is this recognition of property rights and freedom of association that means that property owners therefore have the right to exclude troublemakers from their property, and by extension, covenant communities have the right to exclude those troublemakers from their society entirely. Now, to people who are not already familiar with various concepts from the Austrian School of Economics, which Hoppe comes from, everything I just said can sound somewhat confusing. So here's an extremely simplified example I thought of to make things easy. Imagine that you are the owner of a house with a one-acre garden and a white picket fence around it. Pretty simple problem. Now, let's say a commie with a megaphone decides to hop your fence and he starts spouting out a whole slew of ridiculous commie propaganda and just in general being an annoying visitor. And you don't want him there. You want him to leave. So how do you get this commie off your property? Do you instantly press the McNuke button and fire it off at him? No, you, you do not do the recreational McNukes. What you do is you start with the least violent way to get somebody off of your property. And you'd only escalate based on how much pushback this invader gives you. So for instance, you would start with saying that, hey commie, you are not welcome here. The commie, being an annoying commie, of course, completely ignores you and continues to intrude upon on your property. And he just kind of looks at you at your polite request for him to leave, and he just kind of laughs at you, and goes right back to his megaphone. So then you can escalate by saying, hey, if you don't leave, I'm going to activate physical removal bot, Tesla droid, and he will chuck you off the property. The commie continues to sneer at you and laugh as he continues to intrude upon your property and spew communist propaganda. At that point, you are finally in the right to activate physical removal bot and have him chucked over your picket fence. Now, in the instance that the commie is really, really stupid and decides to jump right back over the fence, you are then in the right to escalate things further from there, but in order to keep this YouTube friendly, I'm just going to let you imagine how far escalations can go. However, the key detail, the main point that you need to remember here is that you have to be the actual owner of this property that this is taking place on. You have to be the rightful owner of this area, and thus you have an ethical right to kick people off your property if you don't want them there. This is pretty much the basis of freedom of association. This is also why the abolition of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is something that's really important to the libertarian right, because if you don't have freedom of association, certain problems can occur with this. For example, let's reimagine this hypothetical scenario, but instead of living in a libertarian free society, let's just say that you live in the United States of America 
and how it currently operates. So instead of pressing a button and summoning physical removal bot, you instead call the police and tell them that you have an intruder on your property. And so the police, they do come and let's say they actually take your side and they do physically remove the commie as he is trespassing and refusing to leave. But then later down the line, you get served with a lawsuit that informs you that the commie, as it turns out, identifies as a member of a protected class trademark. And the commie, of course, claims that he feels like the reason you kicked him off of the property was in fact a hate crime of you discriminating against him or her or Zir or Ziba Zuba Zaba or whatever. And therefore you are guilty of a hate crime. And thus you are forced to show up at court at gunpoint due to the threat of default judgment over something that is completely bogus and shouldn't even be a law. If you're interested in hearing this in more detail, you can watch my video on civil rights if you haven't already done so. But the basic gist of it is that civil rights removes freedom of association. And to make matters worse, the way that civil rights laws are actually enforced is not based on equality as it claims, but rather civil rights laws are are actually enforced as ma equity. Simply doing something that has an adverse or disparate outcome, someone who claims to be a member of a protect class, can count as discrimination, even when there's no proof whatsoever of any kind of discriminatory intent. So the TLDR here is that the most extremely basic idea of physical removal is that with property rights and freedom of association, you have the right to exile people you do not wish to associate with from your property. And nobody owes anyone any kind of explanation whatsoever for why they wish to not associate with someone. But again, this is just the basic idea of physical removal. It actually goes quite a bit further than this. Once you consider the community as a whole, or in other words, once you consider the fact that, as it turns out, we live in a society. So let's imagine the exact same scenario, except this time the annoying Kami has come back and he has instead decided to move into the property next door to you and has thus evolved from annoying trespassing Kami to annoying neighbor. Fantastic. And this is where things can get, well, really annoying because now the Kami continues to spew his communist rhetoric from his megaphone just loud enough that you can barely hear it to be annoyed by it, but he isn't technically intruding upon you or, or otherwise aggressing upon you in any direct, measurable way. Furthermore, he has converted his home into a prostitution slash crack den and regularly invites his commie crack friends over, creating a ridiculously loud and obnoxious hive of degeneracy. Your once peaceful mountain getaway home is now a place of misery as a result of this terrible neighbor. Basically, he's making your life a living hell and there isn't anything you can think of at first that you can really do to stop him. Now, you can try being a bad neighbor right back in his face without aggressing on him, and you can try ostracizing him and shunning him and refusing to do any financial business with him, basically being a bad neighbor right back. But the problem is, that's probably not enough on your own. What if the commie just decides he doesn't care about what you do, and instead he just laughs and sneers at you from his property on his side of the fence? Let's say this commie now has decided that he gets an extreme psychic benefit from making your life miserable. However, he makes sure to still stick to the NAP. He does not aggress upon you or commit violence against you or your property. So he's sticking to the non-aggression rules, but he's instead deliberately sitting right on the edge of the nap and acts like the most irritating and provocative person he possibly can without crossing that line. Of course, the crackheads that he invites over to his den absolutely are aggressing on you and absolutely breaking the nap and regularly try to steal your stuff and sell it to buy more crack because, well, that's just what crackheads do. And when you complain to your neighbor about it and you complain about his crack friends, he of course just pretends to care. Oh, Oh, so sorry you got robbed, neighbor, but my friends are their own person, and I don't condone what they're doing, and you'll just have to take it up with them, blah blah blah, yada yada yada. And of course you can tell that he absolutely enjoys the fact that his crack friends are robbing you, but again, since it's not him directly, you still are technically not in the ethical right to nuke him for it, as tempting as that might be right now. And you can tell that he wants you to aggress on him, actually, because again, he's spewing communist ma victimhood rhetoric. He wants you to do something that looks bad, so we can videotape it and say, look what I mean, we commies are victims of society, we need to rise up and install communism. In other words, he is provoking you and being a cry bully towards you on purpose. In this scenario, you have become a victim of something known as mid-level violence. This is a common provocative tactic used by Marxists where they are as cruel as they can possibly get away with without crossing aggressive boundaries and without crossing any legal lines. And if you try to stop them, they will immediately cry victimhood and paint you as the bad guy. But if you do nothing, then the demoralization is complete and the communist propaganda and degeneracy gets to push its agenda and message along further, completely uncontested until they have gained enough power and following to basically destroy your free society from within. Needless to say, this type of cowardly behavior cannot be tolerated in any libertarian society that wishes to maintain itself. Or, in other words, again, we have come to the conclusion and realization that tolerance of commie degenerates is high time preference behavior. If you tolerate this kind of behavior for prolonged periods of time, they will eventually destroy you, because their ultimate goal is to get rid of any social boundaries 
boundaries of the nap entirely. Because again, most societies today are just kind of liberal pseudo-democracies. The world we actually live in isn't perfect, but it is better than some alternatives. One thing that most Western first world countries at least get semi-right is they do, to some degree, protect people's property rights. And they do, to some degree, kind of enforce something similar to the nap. Not really but close enough in many circumstances. For example, if you live in a first world country in modern day, you can at least usually rely on the police and your local detective agencies to open up an investigation if someone gets murdered. They will at least try to find out who done it. They might not do it the most efficiently, but they'll make an attempt. Likewise, if someone comes in and steals your stuff, the police will at least let you file a report, and they'll make usually some kind of attempt to catch the criminals, if they can at least. And if someone is trespassing on your property, police will usually help you exile, assuming you aren't living in one of those DNC cities that believes in idiotic things like squatters' right. Then you have the opposite problem, anarcho-tyranny. But that's a video for another day. Anyways, the point is that the communist doesn't believe in private property rights. He'll only pretend that he cares about those rights as long as he's living in a society that defends those rights. His ultimate goal is to get rid of them entirely, which is why mid-level violence is something that they love to do so much. It's something that's very effective because they can just play the victim over and over and over again, and they don't really care because, again, they don't actually care about private rights. Their ultimate goal is to tear down Mahira. The point again is that if you tolerate these people for a long enough time, they're gonna destroy your society. It is, again, cowardly behavior. It cannot be tolerated in any libertarian order that wants to maintain itself for any amount of time. Left libertarians, those who believe in live and let live and civil rights liberal nonsense, have no answer whatsoever to mid-level violence. This is the problem. The nap is not being violated. Therefore, they must allow themselves to be demoralized again and again and again and again until they've eventually lost. So what we're really seeing here in this scenario is the unfortunate reality that the NAP is not a complete philosophy when it comes to maintaining social order. It is not a complete legal system. The non-aggression principle works absolutely fantastic for people who live far away from you and in entirely different societies from you and entirely different cultures from you. In other words, the NAP makes for fantastic foreign policy, but it is unfortunately not a complete system for dealing with people who live right next door to each other or even in the same system and society as each other. The live and let live mentality that you get from just the NAP alone is far too tolerant and enabling of degenerate and other forms of unreasonably high time preference behavior and short-term thinking, or in other words, or just in layman's terms, idiotic behavior, and a free society that wishes to maintain itself as a free society must therefore lay additional ground rules and practice the fine art of physical removal. And thus, the commies and other troublemakers who would sow the seeds of degeneracy and societal destruction must be exiled from your community. And this is where right libertarians and hoppians, on the other hand, come in and do have an answer to the commie trash neighbor problem. This is where the covenant community and private city model comes in. Because we understand that modern Western society unfortunately has completely screwed up on this, as we've effectively allowed communists to infiltrate our intellectual institutions where they have been for decades reshaping those institutions in their image, resulting in a system that values and gives prestige to those pledging adherence to the socialist ideology and regime instead of actually, you know, truth. Or as some would say, Marxists walked out of the streets and into the universities where they are canonizing their lies as reality as we speak. So how do you get rid of them in a manner that doesn't involve giving in to their mid-level violence traps? Important question, isn't it? Well, you see, you alone ostracizing and shunning and refusing to do any financial business with your bad neighbor might just be pissing the wind to him. He can easily shrug it off, or he can just flat out not care. But what if everyone in the local community, including those with significantly more financial say than you, also join in the ostracization? Or in other words, you organize a total boycott of your bad neighbor until he is forced to leave and physically distance himself by moving to a community that better fits and accepts his ideals, like the ocean. Okay, just kidding. But on a more serious note, an even better solution is no one ever even selling that plot of land to the commie in the first place so that it's not even ever a problem. Yeah, that's right. You'd want to be a part of a community that recognizes that this kind of person is someone that you wouldn't even want to be living there ever. So hoppy and libertarians, or as we sometimes like to call ourselves, libertarians who live in reality and not la-la land, understand the case for free trade and restricted immigration. Not everyone is compatible with the community that they are applying to live with. Again, I'd like to call out my example of Islam is right about women. Muslims who actually practice Islam seriously are not ideologically compatible with those who believe in Western ideas of feminism. An Islamic private community is therefore completely justified in not wanting to live around Western feminists. It makes perfect sense for a free society to be choosy in who they allow to live with them. In other words, proactive physical removal is often the best physical removal. So under the right libertarianism way, it is thus understood that 
any free market libertarian society to be hypothetically built in the future, in practice, would of course be comprised of thousands of these private communities, covenant communities, which are built on the backs of cultural and virtue-based similarities of the people who choose to build and be a part of that community and the values that form it, which would come with additional codes of contact in addition to the NAP. And the idea would be to find a community that agrees with your virtues and your culture, thus making the freedom of association a two-way handshake and ensuring that the communists can only seethe and cope from far, far away. And of course, they're free to make their attempts at creating their society based on aggression-backed communal ownership of the means of production, and it can fail yet again for the millionth time. Good for them. This worldview of physical removal is strictly opposed to the delusional, egalitarian way, which tries to take the postmodernist route and pretend that all cultures are ideologically equal, and thus compatible, and thus there's no such thing as a bad neighbor in their mind, even though this has been proven time and time again to be false. Now, if you want to see an example of this in practice, today, a start would be the Orania Project. This is a South African town which only sells land to those who are Afghaniers and have no criminal record and share the town's culture and values. Surprise, surprise, the town has actually been pretty financially successful. And while Orania is not perfect since it's still technically existing off the back of the Republic of South Africa state, it exists in spite of the state rather than because of it. And a similar private community could easily exist in its own financial rights. Or to TLDR it, physical removal is both the logical conclusion and most reasonable application of property rights and freedom of association. It is the refusal of those who care about maintaining a society which allows for a free market to tolerate those who don't, as well as the application of self-defense of one's property when it is within your rights. So then that brings me to what I teased at the beginning of this video. When can physical removal actually result in a commie being thrown out of a helicopter? It's pretty simple really, but unfortunately not as funny as some of the memes. Say you own a company which offers helicopter tours and one of the passengers wearing a hammer and sickle shirt suddenly has a random mental breakdown, pulls out a knife and starts attacking other passengers. You happen to be on board this flight as part of the tour and find yourself by random chance in the perfect position to shove this murderous rascal out of your helicopter. Yeah, like I said, it would basically only happen under a self-defense scenario. Again, not as funny as the memes, but hopefully this video has driven the point across for you. Physical removal is not an aggressive action in the way that the Austrian school defines aggression at least, but rather it's more like a combination of ostracization, exile, and self-defense in compliance with the austro libertarian views of property rights. It is more comparable to a safer work internet forum banning someone for posting 18 plus content, or say a bar bouncer or security guard kicking out some drunken idiots who get into a fight from the establishment, than it is comparable to helicopters. Sorry if that ruins it for people who thought Hoppe was edgier than he actually is, but it's an important concept to understand. Physical removal really just provides a way to defend your property and the society you live in from those who would seek to degenerate it and destroy it from within by basically refusing to put up with their crap and finding ways to distance them as far away from the community as possible. Anyways, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment, or leave a tip from my Ko-Fi if you really enjoyed it. Till next time.